So as an aside for more advanced students, uh, let's try to fill in some mathematical details to provide a theory to support or interpret the Linmar hypothesis of disinfection kinetics having to do with uh, the concentration of solutes during drying and their effect on uh, deactivating uh, viruses. So to put in mathematical terms, if we have a certain number of viruses NV in a droplet, then we'll postulate the dNVdt is uh, minus lambda v0, the de deactivation rate per solute virion collision, times the volume fraction of disinfecting solutes, we'll call phi d, which is time dependent, having to do with the size of the droplet, times nv. The, fract the, uh, the volume fraction of disinfecting solutes we'll write as alpha d, a constant, times phi s, which is the total volume fraction of solutes present, uh, and that might be, for example, the fraction of solutes that are sodium chloride or some other salt uh, that might be causing the damage to the virus as opposed to the mucins or other uh, macromolecules that may be present. Uh, then we can, uh, as, the, as, the, as the droplet is shrinking with a radius r of t, then it's simply the volume that of phi s that is getting rescaled relative to the initial value phi is zero as r is zero, the initial radius divided by r of t cubed. So that's just simply the changing of the volume. Now let's recall some of our results uh, from the past uh, 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 earlier part of this chapter having to do with Wells' theory of evaporation. So if we consider diffusion limited droplets, we've shown uh, that uh, the radius of the droplet versus time relative to the initial rate is R0, is square root of one minus T over tau E, where tau E is the evaporation time, R0 squared divided by D bar, a constant with units of diffusivity, times one minus RH, the relative humidity. Now that predicts pure liquid droplets that shrink all the way to nothing and evaporate away. But when there's solute present, there's a cutoff, which we've also discussed, that gives you an equilibrium stable size of the droplet, R equilibrium, relative to R0, which is given by phi S0, the solid volume fraction, or solute volume fraction initially, divided by one minus RH, raised to the one third power. By writing that as square root of one minus tau over tau E, we can also define the time tau when you reach the equilibrium size by a diffusion limited evaporation process. So that's sort of the time to form a stable droplet nucleus. Now, let's start combining all these equations and we can write what is the volume fraction of disinfecting solutes, phi d of t? Well, from this equation here, it'll be alpha d times phi s of t, which is phi s zero uh, times this ratio r zero over r cubed. So using this expression for diffusion limited uh, kinetics, this would give me a one minus t over tau e to the three halves. And if we look at the uh, ultimate limit uh, here uh, that they'll get from when there's a solute, when tau goes, or when t goes to tau, the evaporation times, so when you've reached the droplet nucleus stage, we're left with just alpha d times one minus rh. So that tells us sort of the, 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 the um, <clears throat> fraction of solutes which are present um, as a function of uh, relative humidity, but also um, as a function of time as drying is going on. So now let's go back to this dynamical equation and let's go ahead and solve it. So this is a first order uh, separable ordinary differential equation. So what we can do is write this as minus dNV over lambda V zero NV is equal to phi D of T dT. So we put all the, the N's on one side and the, and the T's on the other side. And so we can actually then integrate this equation. And so, the integral of dn over n is the natural log of n. So we can write this as minus one over lambda v zero, natural log of nv over nv zero, which is the initial value of nv. And in time, we're integrating from the initial time zero up to the uh, droplet nucleus time tau uh, of phi d of t dt. So substituting our expression right here, we then see that we have alpha d phi s zero times the integral from zero to tau dt over one minus uh, t over tau e to the three halves. 
And we can do that integral and get alpha d phi s 0. Uh, and then let's see, to get the um, <coughs> integration variable, we need to have a tau e here and write that as dt over tau e. And then doing the integral, uh, we would get 2 times 1 over square root of 1 minus tau over tau e minus 1. Evaluating the two uh, limits of integration, I take into account the integral of the antiderivative of the integrand there is, is, is uh, uh, 1 over 1 minus t over tau e to the 1 half power uh, uh, times, times 2. So uh, putting all this together then, we can write the uh, uh, viability. So we can write um, the log of nv over nv0 as minus, we have all this stuff here, 2 um, alpha d phi s 0 lambda v0, putting the lambda v0 back on the other side with the minus sign. And then we have um, times uh, two factors. So first, there's the factor which we know has units of time, which is r0 squared over uh, d bar. So that's essentially kind of a, humi a water vapor diffusion time that comes into the uh, evaporation time tau e. So that's, that's the scale, time scale here. But then what we're really interested in is the relative humidity effect. So uh, that would be, uh, let's see here. So uh, we have this factor, and then we uh, also have uh, the, uh, let's see, the 1 minus rh is coming in where? Um, sorry, so 1 over square root of tau, this one is from right here. That's r over um, r of tau, and r of tau is by definition r equilibrium. So it's this factor here. So we get um, 1 minus rh over phi s 0 to the 1 third minus 1. And then uh, we also have uh, this factor of uh, 1 minus Rh. That comes, yes, from the tau e, because the tau e has this sort of basic time scale, but there's also a factor of 1 minus Rh that I've included. So the point of all this theory was to try to understand what is the dependence on relative humidity, which is what I've shown here in white. And if you plot this, uh, function, then what you find is a function of relative humidity. Um, then if you do here log of nv over nv0, so this is our relative viability of the virus, and the 0 here uh, corresponds to, to nv0, the initial. Then this white function, what this looks like, is something which decays like this. It kind of reaches a minimum around 80, or in this range from sort of 60 to 80, depending on what the values of these of these other of this parameter phi zero is, in fact. And then it goes back up again. So basically, we get a shape for the dependence of the relative humidity that nicely matches the experimental data and is consistent with the the hypothesis of disinfection kinetics that was postulated by Lin and Marr.